Hi everybody, this is Maxine Taylor, and today the moon is in Pisces. And I thought, this is just a wonderful day to record the video I've been planning, uh, uh, the video on Neptune, nebulous, nefarious Neptune. And those of you who have a copy of your birth chart, keep it in front of you, um, because as I go through the houses, you will be able to see where Neptune is in your birth chart. Now, a couple of notes that I want to share with you. First of all, Neptune has a 164 year cycle. So it, it is not going to return more than likely in our lifetime, but to where it began 164 years prior. Now, right now, Neptune is in its own sign, Pisces. It's halfway through. <laughs> in 2025, it's going to dip its toe into Aries, and that'll be a totally different vibration. And I'm gonna describe all of this in just a second. And then as it moves through Aries, we'll talk about that as we approach 2025. Um, I, I call Neptune, nebulous nefarious Neptune, because it's like trying to grab a handful of smoke. It is elusive. Uh, it can be the very highest and most spiritual of planets, or it can be total escape, make believe, um, and, and just the opposite. The symbol of Pisces, the sign that it rules, actually it co-rules it with Jupiter, but I interpret uh, Neptune as the ruler of Pisces. Two fish tied together by the tail, each swimming in the opposite direction. Uh, Neptune can be divine inspiration or total escapism. And what I thought I would do, I have a whole list of things that Neptune rules. Why Did, am I using a list? Because when I'm describing Neptune, I'm describing it with words and it's like blowing bubbles. As I said, like trying to grab a handful of smoke. So here are some of the things that Neptune rules. Actors, addicts, it, it rules drugs, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, um, aliases, uh, make-believe, uh, poisons of all types, even poisonous animals, um, water, beaches, beguilement, um, bewilderment, bliss. You hear, it can be blissful. Uh, bubbles, camouflage, hide now, jail cells, the chakras, clandestine activities, clouds, coffee, conspiracies, crazy people. I love that one. I love that one. Delusion and illusion. It dissolves things very slowly. Drama, dreamers and dreams, enchantment, escape, espionage, exiles, ESP, fantasy, our feet, fiction, Films, the movies, uh, floods, fog. Fog is a perfect example of Neptune. Um, forgery, again, make believe. Gas and all gases. Glass, uncertainty. Um, idealists. 
hypnosis, infatuation, insanity, makeup, disguises and costumes, mist, prisons, psychism, sleep, dreams, spies, suffering, sympathy, tobacco, I mentioned that, veils, wizards, worrying. Can you hear it just running the gamut again? Try and grab a handful of smoke. Now, what I've always said is that we are, we have our free will as to how we can use any planet and it can manifest on its highest and best level or its lowest, depending on how we feel, what we want. So what I thought I would do is go around the zodiac and describe Neptune in each of the houses. As I do this, keep your own birth chart in front of you because I'll be talking not only about your birth Neptune, but where Neptune is now by transit. And by that, for those of you who are not familiar with the, with the transits, that's the actual orbiting, the actual movement of planets around uh, our chart, around the zodiac. So um, since Neptune is in Pisces, which is its own sign, it has been um, manifesting very, very strongly since it entered Pisces in uh, 2001, 2002. Let me just double, double check that date. Yes, it, uh, excuse me, I, I misspoke, 2011, it dipped its toe in. 2012, it was firmly in Pisces. Um, okay. Let's just start with the first house of the Zodiac. I've put Neptune in purple. I see Neptune as a kind of periwinkle, which is the color I'm wearing, a combination of lavender and blue. Um, if you have Neptune in your birth chart, in the first house, you are either divinely inspired or find it easy to escape. Now, the first house deals with you, your physical body. And you may find that you're very sensitive to medications, to drugs of any sort. You are open to people who might tend to deceive you because there's a great element of wishful thinking about you. Uh, there is a, a look in the eyes of the person with Neptune in the first house. It is uh, divine. It is enchanting. Um, it is idealistic on its highest level. So essentially with Neptune in the first house, you can be anything you want to be. You can be any way you choose to be. You love costumes, makeup perhaps. Now I know there are a couple of you out there saying, no, I don't wear any makeup. But for the, I'm talking about for the most part because Neptune spins a web of gossamer wherever it goes. Um, it loves playing different roles. And this is what makes Neptune in the first, the person with Neptune in the first, such a marvelous actor or actress. Neptune rules music. It rules spirituality. And there is a great affinity to move toward all things spiritual and divine. Or do a lot of consumption of alcohol in order to escape 
from the heaviness that life sometimes brings us. Can you hear it goes from one extreme to the other? It's entirely up to you as to how you use it, as it is with all planets. Okay. Now, if Neptune is in your first house right now, you're experiencing that. And as the planets move around the zodiac, i.e. the birth chart, we have an opportunity to experience the expression of the planet in each of the houses. Well, maybe not each of them, because I'm not sure that um, all of us are going to be living uh, through one the cycle of Neptune, which, let me remind you, is 164 years. Okay. Let's do Neptune in the second house. Now, this is very interesting. Neptune dissolves whatever it touches. Uh, it is the higher octave of Venus. Venus is love. And so Neptune uh, can often be pure spiritual love. Well, in the second house, if you're dealing with money, uh, and the second house is naturally ruled by Venus in the natural zodiac, uh, Neptune in the second house can dissolve money, or it can allow you to create your dream, create money through putting a dream into operation. True story. In 1980, when Ted Turner began CNN, I was honored to be their on-air astrologer. And I was for um, a few years when they started broadcasting. Well, naturally, when I did the chart for CNN, which I, naturally I would do that, CNN has Neptune in the second house. And I was so concerned about that because people came in from all over the country to work for this brand new cable news network. And I thought, gosh, it doesn't look like um, Ted Turner is gonna make a lot of money at this unless he introduces an altruistic or spiritual tone to the way in which he makes his money. This is designed to be his dream come true. Well, when I was invited uh, to be their on-air astrologer, I thought, I'm contributing to that. There's the spiritual part. Um, I know it was like this much, but still, uh, uh, I was honored and uh, still consider that experience to be one of the high points of my career. You, in your chart with Neptune in the second house, if you have a dream and that dream is squelched, you might want to dust off that Neptune and allow it to flourish, to express. Um, put your dream into operation at the appropriate time. In other words, don't start a new project on a retrograde Mercury, et cetera. Um, but allow your dream to be the, the guide uh, for your income. Now it can, Neptune to me is like a bucket of sand with a teeny little hole in the bottom. You keep filling it up and it very slowly um, empties out. It's like if there's a rowboat docked, tied to uh, the dock with a rope. You take the rope from the dock, put it into the rowboat, and very gently, the tide, the movement of the water, which is Neptune, gently washes it out to sea. That's Neptune. And I've met people who have absolutely put Neptune to fabulous use financially. Your values, second house, deal with everything relating to Neptune. Alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, um, hidden things, hidden things. I refer you to Trump's chart, 
Okay. There it is. Neptune in the third house. Neptune rules uh, divine inspiration. In the third house of the conscious mind, uh, you may find yourself confused uh, very often, not understanding uh, different concepts, different ideas, but divinely inspired to express on a magnificent level. Uh, this is a wonderful place for an orator, a public speaker. Uh, it is, again, like trying to grab a handful of smoke. It's not structured. So depending on what aspects are made to Neptune, you can get the structure you would need. But I suggest whenever I see Neptune in the third house, um, absolutely start a blog write a book, do a video, your ideas are inspired. But unfortunately, most people won't understand what you're saying. So because it's third house, you'll be able to um, express it, maybe dumb it down a little bit so that people can understand it. Uh, with divine inspiration, you may blurt things out and, and not even realize how profound your words are or what you're saying. Or very innovative, very inventive, ah, but very, and very dreamy. There may be something about your childhood or your first sibling, your oldest sibling, that involves sacrifice. You may have been a sacrificer in your childhood because Neptune does rule sacrifice it also rules uh hope and someday it's like someday my prince will come someday my dream will come true and hang on to that neptune in the fourth house fourth house deals with home and family and emotional security. So your home is your escape. It's your haven. Remember, it is the most glorious, it's heaven, or it is just the opposite. Um, one of the parents one could be an alcoholic. Someone living in the, in the house could be uh, someone who lives on drugs. Neptune rules um, uh, drugs of all types, aspirin, uh, penicillin, any type of drug. It is, however, our dream come true. And so you have the, a dream of the ideal family. And when you think of your family, they can do no wrong. Or one of the parents is a martyr, or you may feel martyred because of the need to serve your family. You can see, again, it goes from one extreme to another. That's Neptune. Remember the fish tied together by the tail? Pisces? Neptune is truly the ruler of Pisces. Neptune in the fifth house of children and fun and games. Mm-hmm. Neptune there says, let's go on an escape vacation. Uh, the fifth house is fun, it's sex, it's movies, it's sports. Um, so there is a tendency, <clears throat> excuse me, to lose yourself in fun. And one of the outlets can be alcohol or drugs, which Neptune rules, all right? Um, when it comes to your children, they can do no wrong. You adore them, particularly the oldest child, because that's what the fifth house rules. Children in general, the oldest child in particular. Uh, Neptune in the third house rules your brothers and sisters, 
the oldest sibling in particular. So back to uh, house number five, we're talking about escaping into fun. You lose yourself in fun. Gambling, uh, anything that you consider to be fun. And Neptune is what we worship and adore. I have observed that in clients. Um, so you would worship and adore your kids. The fourth house parent, a sibling, maybe money, want to be worshiped and adored. Get the picture? You can apply any meaning for Neptune to the house that it's in. <clears throat> okay, Neptune in the sixth house, of work, health, and service. This is a very interesting placement. Neptune, ruler of Pisces, wants to serve. Neptune can be a martyr. Pisces can be a martyr. Dedicating itself to a cause in which it believes. The problem with Neptune is we tend to build an altar under what we worship and adore. And the problem is that that pedestal supports someone who is larger than life and too good to be true, which means they have to fall from grace. And then what follows is sorrow, sadness, and disillusionment and disappointment. All, everything I just said, everything is ruled by Neptune. When it comes to health, Neptune in the sixth house indicates the tendency uh, to have a very strong reaction, to even be allergic, Neptune uh, involved in allergies, of course, of different things, uh, to have an allergic reaction to drugs, uh, uh, traditional medication. And so non-traditional healing chiropractic, which, is no longer non-traditional. When I was a kid, it was. Um, but energy healing, um, herbs, um, tinctures. Remember, any liquid is Neptune. <clears throat> that is how you're healed, best of all. And Neptune in the first can also be allergic reactions to things. You might say, well, I don't have Neptune in the sixth and I don't have Neptune in the first, but I'm allergic to everything. Well, there's a prominent Neptune somewhere. I mean, prominent it can be in any of the houses or in your chart, and it can have uh, be involved in a difficult aspect with another planet. And that very often is what blocks the uh, spiritual flow of Neptune because it's forced to manifest on a, a lower level. Uh, an allergy is, is a block to moving forward. Illness can be a block to it. Or you could martyr yourself and move forward anyway. Okay, Neptune in the seventh, very, very interesting. Oh, I forgot, Neptune in the sixth, you escape into your job, into your work. And if somebody says, uh, I need you, what they really mean is I love you. Now, Neptune in the seventh. That's partnership, uh, relationships of all types. And with Neptune in the seventh, you adore the one-on-one -on -one relationship, but you can attract to you people who are larger than life, who seem too good to be true. On the negative side, that may be so. You want to check the fine print in the contract, so to speak. So there's Neptune just doing its thing, uh, introducing you, presenting itself uh, as somebody who can fulfill your dream. Conversely, the world sees you people see you, particularly in the one-on-one -on -one situation, as just divine. Uh, they don't see you clearly. They see you the way they choose to see you. 
They make, uh, they, they can spin a fantasy around you. And you might be saying, those of you who are students of, a, of a psychology, well, that's true of most people. Yeah, but it's stronger with men. Um, you wear a, a particular outfit. That's the impression they save forever of you. They, you turn to them to be your savior. They're looking at you as theirs. Every planet has a catch 22. Now, Neptune in the eighth house of other people's money. This is very interesting. You are divinely inspired to help other people create money. A very altruistic tone, a very giving tone, um, and can be considered gullible. And that's what you want to watch out for. Because um, sometimes there is a naivete about people with a strong Neptune that others can take advantage of. Remember, Neptune can be con men. So you want to check the fine print in any contract you're involved in. Now, let me remind you, Neptune uh, being the dreamer, the eighth house being the astral plane, this in uh, Neptune in the eighth lends a spiritual toe, tone to the psychic energy of the eighth house. Um, and anything in the eighth house is going to be transformed and reborn in this lifetime. That means you don't have to leave the planet to do it. And so wishful thinking, idealism, uh, naivete, all that you will work through in this lifetime. How will you do that? Probably because you will be faced with situations that show your innocence, your naivete, your martyrdom, etc. On its highest and best level, you are a giver who would dedicate your life to helping other people create the money that they would like. Just read the fine print. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Neptune in the ninth house. The ninth house is our higher mind. Now, uh, that means we see ninth house people see the big picture. Their dream is to travel. Their dream, Neptune the dream, of course, is to experience different cultures because they they understand human nature neptune in the ninth ninth house deals with our belief systems you believe you have faith neptune faith and belief and the two planets that rule pisces jupiter and neptune deal with those concepts so uh there is a tendency to escape though maybe uh Go to go 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 long. Go to another country. Spend time there uh, as a to get away. It's all about getting away. Uh, Ninth house deals with higher education, so you may be interested in religious studies, spiritual studies, non-traditional studies. Um, if you study law, ninth house. You would be interested in saving people. You would be interested in introducing a spiritual tone, perhaps. Um, it, there is a beauty about Neptune in the ninth, as well as the message, keep your passport current. Because you'd love to get, just get up on your horse and ride off and, and get out of Dodge. Now, Neptune in the 10th house, this is our career, our public image. And that's what the world sees of us. In the seventh house, it's our one-on-one -on -one relationships. In the 10th house, it's the world because that is our career. Neptune there, uh, you show up as a very dreamy, spiritual person. I have a colleague who has Neptune in her 10th house. And 
she is uh, an airy fairy person who uh, loves the romance of astrology, of the goddesses, of, I mean, she is just um, a wishful thinker. And I don't mean that in a negative way. She adds a spiritual concept to the charts that she reads. If you're not an astrologer and you have Neptune in that 10th house, you can be involved in spiritual service in, a, in your career or service in general in your career. Uh, you might own um, uh, a liquor store or uh, a drug company. I'm talking about medicinal drugs. <clears throat> or others, others. Your public image is what anybody wants to see of you. And it's dreamy and idealistic. It's beautiful. And the 10th house parent, that's the out front parent, is dreamy, idealistic, and teaches you to put your dream into action. Neptune in the 11th house. I know someone who has Neptune in his 11th house. He adores his friends. They are, as much as he loves his family, they are just fabulous to him, according to him. They can do no wrong. Remember, Neptune, wherever it is, can do no wrong. He turns to them as an escape. And they are larger than life. And his friends are beautiful, by the way. So if you have Neptune in the 11th, you are, you are a humanitarian. You want to serve. You're not looking for leadership. You want to serve and blend, waft into the group. That's what Nept uh, Neptune does. It wafts, it blends. And last but not least, Neptune in the 12th, that's its natural placement in the natural zodiac. And so you are uh, an idealist, a spiritualist. Um, Neptune in the ninth, is a visionary. You are a very sensitive spiritual being. Uh, you may have mediumship ability. You may um, be one of those people who when you walk into a room, you are led to clear it. Neptune is escape. And you can escape through sleep or uh, just getting away from people. You need to be alone once a day. And the same thing I say about Pisces, I'm going to say about Neptune in the 12th. Neptune in the 12th builds a castle in the air. And once a day, they return to it to add another room. And if you infringe on their castle while they're adding those rooms, they will fill up the moat, pull up the drawbridge, and swim away. Uh, with Neptune in the 12th, you're not looking for a fight at all. Now, the 12th house is the subconscious. And when people uh, look at their 12th house as astrology students, they don't necessarily see it clearly. With Neptune there, you really don't but you have a sense that you have a spiritual mission that may be larger than you are aware of. And what I would do it, if I had Neptune in the, in the 12th is open myself up, allow myself to receive all of God's blessings and to serve 
without recognition perhaps from a behind the scenes place. Do you want to be an invisible or anonymous philanthropist? Neptune, not so much the money part, but the giving part. Now, wherever Neptune is in your chart, by transit, everything I've said applies to you now. Neptune is in 16 degrees of Pisces. Find 16 degrees of Pisces in your birth chart. That is the area that Neptune is activating. And Neptune is subtle, very subtle. It's not like Mars. It dissolves. Think of the rowboat gently drifting out to sea. Think of the divine hand of God placed upon you, blessing you, saying, well done, my child. Well done. So I hope I've made sense of nebulous, nefarious Neptune. And I hope you're enjoying looking at it in your own chart. And so, till we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. <laughs>